and thank you, everyone. Uh, so we're going to spend a few minutes just talking about this with you guys. Questions, uh, comments, uh, and they'll set up the chairs. We'll also get a few questions from the folks who've been watching online. Uh, so for those of you who uh, came in late, we started with uh, Kirk Lynn from the Root Mechanicals. Come on up here first. So we had no idea whether this would be of any interest to any. How are you doing? Doing all right? Okay. Thanks for coming. Uh, so I, I'm just going to go ahead and, and ask you guys to comment. A anything that particularly jump out to you guys? Anything? Anyway. I was, I mean, you guys are great. Dude. That was great. Yeah, these guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was kind of struck by how every, every, everybody's real instinct to uh, strip things away and toward like a kind of simplicity and an honesty and authenticity, <laughs> which you guys were really brilliant at. It's interesting that that was the, seemed like that was the goal. Uh, I just appreciated the peek into your process. I, mean, I, I was most thrilled by just seeing you, the three of you work and how you work. You know, it's just uh, fascinating. I wish, like there's so many great companies in this yeah, room. Those <laughs> represent in this room that it just felt like, you know, we really just wanted to do this for a few days. And just take, take a little, a little like sneak peek in that, you know, the way people work, because it's just fascinating to me. I love, I love theater, okay, I love theater, theater is great. <laughs> 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 yeah, we'll, we'll try to make it happen that we get to spend more time with each other's work another time, uh, peeking at each other's work. Uh, questions, the comments from anybody here in the room? Yeah, I'm back. So, I, I'm very struck watching the process, uh, how much freedom there is to play around, especially with movement and with uh, non-verbal, non-textual elements. Can you give us some examples of like the, the moment when language does enter back in? Okay, interesting. Great question. The, so the question, uh, for those of you who couldn't hear him, uh, he's struck by the, the freedom uh, to work uh, without the text, and then one is wondering what happens when, the, where's the moment, or, or describe the moment when the text comes in. Uh, I guess for us, it's funny you say it comes back in, because I don't feel like we remove it. Um, oh, okay, or enters in. Or enters in. If it enters in. I, um, I think of text gesturally. So that a, um, someone says something, it's a, it's a gesture that comes from a character the same way that they might exit a room or close a door or throw something. Um, <laughs> and so it's less about carrying information than it is a, a way of revealing character. And so the story for us, of the event, isn't really moved along through the text, verbal text, any more than it would be from something else, like falling off of a ladder or something. Um, so where it's appropriate, I think, is where it comes in. I think there's a certain moment in that little trio that you saw where they could have easily said something to each other. And, and um, it, that was just a seed of something, and we're, we, we, we were to keep continuing that. Who knows? Maybe it becomes it, one of them really wants to always bark at one another, or, you know, growl or say something, you know. Well, maybe one's very verbal. So I don't think it's a rule to take it out. It's just it wants to come in when it naturally comes in. Um, I would say that, that, that text centers the picture when uh, we need the text to support the things that are going on on stage. So, if we're, you know, 
fooling with lights or where you know we've got a great moment going and it needs some words to complement it or uh, to enhance it, then that's when we go for the words. I would say for the most part in our shows, text is there right from the get go. Then we're not we use it right away. It depends on the day, but it's there. Go. Am I uh, tyranny of the mic? Next question. <laughs> Go keep it. <laughs> What's that? If you have one question, oh, it might be hard to get. Uh, yes, here, second round. Um, my question is uh, curiosity about the length of time that you spend. Um, before you say, okay, this is it. <laughs> you know, like the editing process, and whether you, I guess it's probably for all of you, but whether you give yourselves a deadline to make the work final, or like, how do you know when it's done? <laughs> 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 You know, we, uh, speaking specifically about City Company, we grew up as a young company actually within the regional theater system. And you get three weeks, maybe four max, to make something and then tech and you're out. But that ain't a lot of time. So in our early life, we just started get it up fast, get it up fast, get it up fast, get it up fast. Um, so the editing is happening on its feet. And uh, it's sort of. I think we're actually, you know, guys, we're actually trying to slow down now and see if we can find more time and give ourselves a little bit more room not to nail it down right away. Um, it's a, obviously a very difficult question um, because it's so specific to each uh, individual shot. Um, but, you know, uh, of course, as you can see, it happened over a period of three or four years. Uh, Larry Project over a couple of years. Um, project later over a couple of years. Um, Thirty the variations was four or five years. Um, and, and, you know, of, of dipping in and coming out, dipping back in and coming out. Um, so, uh, you know, the little bit you saw of the, the way we have even approached the experimentation phase, you know, it's just, you know, all those individual moments that begin, that you saw just six or seven of them right there, you know, in a matter of two minutes. And you know you're in there for a month, and you've got a wealth of information there that you, you then have to sit through and come back, and then you have rings and rings of more you know, material, and it's just, it's just and, and yeah, and so you know the process of exploration, and then and then going back and editing is, is, is months and years. So, okay. so, so I was just curious, like if you give yourselves a deadline, or do you? Let, let, I mean, they have the luxury of letting it go, or, and then the extension of the question, of course, is do you feel like one or other, the other serves the work that having immense amounts of time? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think sometimes it's a good time to kill it, in a way. But um, we, we kind of worked on the money comes out a little bit. Like, what I feel like each, as each project we've made, uh, has been a little bit more complex uh, in its theatrics and its technicalities, uh, and therefore requires a little more money. Um, and in general, I feel like the rule of thumb is that we work for at least a month toward, for like a workshop, um, and then we will leave it, come back, and do eight to 10 weeks leading up to a production something like that, and then we know that that production is kind of a rough draft, and then we'll come back to it again, do another draft or something like that. That's really rough, but that's something like that. Uh, I guess I'd say, I, I think the Rubex, these days it seems like we like to set ourselves arbitrary deadlines and share a part of the work with our audience in some way. A um, little workshop productions here and there. Um, and then I'd also say it takes us about two years probably, for like a short kind of trip. Um, and then I'd also say I think that I don't know how interested we are in being done. Like every time we work on something, we do it again. I think most people. Yeah, over here. Um, 
I guess I had a question because earlier in the night, Grant Speak came up and you mentioned funding, um, I guess across the board, what have been some of the biggest challenges with getting people on board when you don't have a final piece and you have to really study the process, and I guess some of the verbiage or the terms are just biggest obstacles to getting them to be like, ah, uh, whether that's a good or a bad or yeah, we talked about that some this week, uh, a lot in the convening. Um, I remember feeling like nobody knew who the Rhythm Mechanicals were in the sense that like nobody will ever give us money because they don't trust us. And like, how do we get somebody to listen to us? And now I think it's more a question of, um, you know, just sort of saying what we're passionate about at the time and what we're doing. It's, I think the hardest thing is getting people, I don't know if we want this, but like getting the, the once we can say it to somebody, we've already spent a lot of time working. And so, like, what is that time when you're just like, how we are we? I mean, I don't know if we want funding for this, but like the idea that like you want to pay artists to go and conceive something together, or the inception of a devised work with a company, is a weird thing and is an interesting thing. Um, we make our uh, we usually get money at, I get individual artist grants in Philadelphia has generally been what we do. Independence Foundation and the Philadelphia Theater Initiative really vital, huge supporters of Rain Pants work. Um, and then there's some individual contributions that we get more in towards production. But the grant writing process so far has been actually a really important part of the whole process because when you have to put, you have to articulate the thought, um, for me, that's like one of the most important parts is writing a grant. And oftentimes, when you get in the dark about a project, what are we making? I'll go back to the grant and be like, oh yeah, that's what we decided. I don't even know that. So, and for Trey, oftentimes it's um, making the postcard. And he'll, he's very visual, and he'll conceive of a postcard um, or images way early. And it's crazy. We'll do like a photo shoot um, before we know anything. And he's crazy about it, loves it, and it really helps him. That's the way he thinks, so it really helps him. Um, I, I think the most important thing is to communicate the best you can um, the questions you're asking with your work. Um, and and uh, uh, it's not so much, I, I think, the nuts and bolts of it that, that people want to hear. You know, it's not necessarily these exercises that people are going to be motivated to give money to. Do you know what I mean? They're not going to see the school. They're <laughs> not going to give them thousands of dollars to keep doing that. It's, you know, what, it, what, what, do, you, what do you want to say what, you know, um, for, um, with your work? What, you know, with, for instance, when we were doing the Larry Project, you know, we felt like we were really asking, like, how, how can theater enter into a national dialogue of what's going on? How do we deal with current events in the theater? And what, what role does the theater have in current events and discussions? And, um, you know, I think those are the kinds of questions that people kind of got excited about. Um, so. I would say um, the same thing as Jeff. I know that when Anne Bogart writes narrative, it's all about trying to articulate her vision of the piece, so it's incredibly useful for her. Uh, from my point of view, I, 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 I've made one show in my company that I was in charge of. It was a dance theater piece of no text, and it was with a band of movable called Rachel's. And uh, I wrote a lot of grants, and I got no money for it. And I suspect because nobody knew who I was. I mean, they, they knew who the city was. But that's where friends came uh, really on board, people who had past relationships with said, sure, I'll do the show, and I'll help you, I'll help you put it out. I, I'm very conscious of the fact that we've had all these people so long, including these gentlemen, and but not alone these gentlemen. And what I'm going to suggest is a reception in the lobby, and let's go ahead to the lobby. We'll collect any of the Twitter questions, and we'll ask them individually of you guys, whoever they were for, and we'll get those answers back. But let's this group go ahead and adjourn to the lobby, get a glass of wine, and and uh, enjoy each other's company. Okay?